I, Gladys Edwina Buck, being of sound mind and body, do hereby will and bequeath to Harrison Buck, the nephew I never knew, and the Buck's family sole heir, I leave the family home. Buck House. The only condition I make is that he must share it with the present tenants for as long as they wish to stay or for a period of ten years, after which time he will own the property unencumbered. Furthermore, if he tries to entice or force the tenants to leave, then he will automatically forfeit the inheritance and Buckhouse will be sold and the proceeds donated to charity. What time is it, Liz? Five minutes since the last time you asked. Look, Ipana, slow down a bit. Don't worry. You look fabulous. And remember, he can't throw you out. I know, honey. It's my stars. They said today I'm going to meet an older person who's going to influence my life profoundly. Romance is in the air. This could be the big one. Oh, she on about big ones again. <laughs> And that's another reason, Ted, why dykes are better than poofs. How old is I don't need to know? Poofs are obsessed by size. I mean, when was the last time you heard a lesbian say, Caw, check out the size of that chick's muff? She's right, you know. But if a guy walks into a gay bar and he's got a lunch the size of a grapefruit, you need gum boots to wade through all the drool. Ain't that the truth, girl? Liz, did I give you the day off today? I didn't take the day off. I worked this morning. But I thought it would be best to be here to greet our new landlord. So what did you sell this morning? Sales at Buck's Bargains were a bit slow this morning, but there was a lot of interest. Interest doesn't pay your wages. As I understand it, in the will, you were left the aunt's bargain shop, right? Not strictly true. Liz and I only run the business. Nephew owns it. So it's exactly the same as my situation. I don't own the club. Nephew owns that too. But I get to run it and have a share in the profits. And ooh, honey, I can't wait to see the look on his face when he finds out he owns a gay and lesbian nightclub called the Slimy Cod Piece. That is such a gross name. It was recommended to me by my spirit guide, Liz. It reminds me of a fishmonger's apron. I always thought that the smell of fish was an aphrodisiac for you lesbians. Sure, and a puff's favorite aftershave is eau de urinal. Not many people know this, Liz but it's also a very refreshing mouthwash. But the one thing I don't understand is both the aunt's businesses did quite well. Yeah. So who has left all the cash? No one. When they died, they didn't leave any money. Are you sure? None at all. Not a cent. There was barely enough to cover the funerals. They'd spent the lot. But what on? Who knows? It wasn't on this place. Okay, places everybody, here we go. A cab's just arrived. The moment of truth. Ooh, do I look all right? Maybe I should change. I'll go check. Stop worrying. You look fine in black. Well, it's probably just as well. False alarm. It's just dog. Don't uh, get too excited. Oh, that's easy for you to say. I feel so sorry for men. Imagine having a libido that cruises like a battleship on a sea of testosterone. Hmm? And when you see another battleship on the horizon, it's like up with the big guns and all you want to do is shoot. Hey guys. Bang, bang, bang. Did I miss something? Liz was just expounding on the marvels and the mysteries of the male gay libido. Battleships? Uh-huh. I like that one much better than when she says gay men are like black holes in space, constantly sucking each other into the cosmic void. I love it when you talk dirty. See what I mean? I'm glad I'm a real woman. Men are such animals. <laughs> well, is Grandad here yet? Mr. Harrison Buck has not deemed to honour us with his presence as yet, if that's what you mean. Well, how old is he anyway? Well, let's see. Gladys was 83 when she died, so that would put him probably somewhere in his 60s. Ted's age. Liz's IQ. <laughs> well, I think it's going to be nice to have a mature gentleman around the place for a change. So, he's in his 60s. What else do we know about him? He has a sheep station in Wyangra. Where's Wyandra? Do you know where Bondi is? I thought Bondi was a beach. Well, you take a left, honey, and then you go about a thousand miles. Wyangra is nowhere near Bondi Beach. It's way out in the bush in southern Queensland. Queensland. I like the sound of that. 
And as I understand it, the sheep stations are very large, aren't they? You'd better believe it. Some of them are bigger than whole European countries. Some of them are bigger than American states. Bigger than Texas. I can't offer you very much. Just a simple, quiet life in the country, looking after my 20-bedroom homestead and helping me entertain visiting heads of state, royalty and movie stars. Of course, if you'd prefer, we could just hop onto one of my Learjets and fly off to the island. The island? Yes. I have brought you a tropical island, the Great Barrier Reef, and I've had its name changed to Ipana because its unspoilt, sun-kissed beauty reminded me of you. Ipana, everything I own is yours. If you will only do me the great honor of becoming my wife. Harrison, this is so sudden. I'll have to think about it. Hmm. <laughs> Don't some of these big station owners have city business interests as well? Sure. Some of them make more money in the city than they ever did on the land. Doug, you'd be absolutely perfect for the part. Look, my movie company has already signed up Mel Gibson, Harrison Ford and Tom Cruise. And the deal we're offering you is equal billing with them. 16 million in fees, five percentage of the box office take and the entire merchandising license. I don't know what to say. All right, you drive a hard bargain. We'll make it up to 18 million. A four-picture contract and a house in Beverly Hills as well and top billing. Oh, and by the way, I hope you don't mind, but I've already given Tom Cruise your telephone number. He said he wants to start rehearsing the sex scenes straight away. Where do I sign? One thing none of us has considered is what happens if the guy doesn't even want the place? What happens if he's not even interested in Buckhouse? Well, Liz, I've decided that I'm going to let you run the place. I like your ideas about turning Buckhouse into a women-only space. But I agree entirely that patriarchal society has a lot to answer for. And I hope this gesture, in its own small way, goes to redress some of the inequities suffered by your lesbian sisters. Why, thank you, Mr. Buck. And furthermore, I like your ideas about turning sections of the house into a repository for lesbian and feminist literature, a K.D. Lang Museum, and a tattoo and body piercing studio are nothing short of brilliant. Feel free to make the necessary alteration to the house and just bill me. It's what my aunt would have wanted. Thank you, Mr. Buck. You are a gentleman and a feminist. According to the will, if he doesn't want the place, it has to be sold. Then we're all out of a home. I don't think he'll sell it. He's not getting any younger. And he must be really lonely out there in the bush. Ted, you've got to help me. It's these young jackaroos I've got working for me. Twelve of them. They're a real handful. When they're not getting into each other's pants, they're trying to get into mine. And now, a couple of them have started chasing the sheep. Oh, sounds serious. Twelve of them, you say? Yep. All between the ages of 18 and 23. Oh, it's going to be a hard job keeping all these young, virile men satisfied. But between the two of us, mate, I think we've got a chance. Oh, please, mate, you've got to help me for the sake of the sheep. Twelve sex-starved young men between the ages of 18 and 22. Oh, the poor sheep. OK, I'll do it. He'll probably be glad of the rest in the city. What was that? I heard a car door. There's somebody walking up the path. Walking? That's promising. At least he's not in a wheelchair. Well, I'm ready, honey. Diamonds. Movies. Body piercing. Sheep. Dog? Dog, I thought I told you to keep your stray trade away today. Don't look at me, mate. He's not one of mine. Hey, partner, since when have you been cradle snatching? Well... There is something about his face that looks familiar. But no, I don't know him. Liz? Ted, get real. <laughs> this is Buck House, isn't it? Yes. Oh, great. I'm Harry. So you keep saying? Harry Buck. Harry Buck? Mr. Buck, my name is the Panavan Trap. I can't tell you how glad I am to meet you. 
And Mrs. Dog. G'day, mate. Uh, G'day. Can I take you back? Yeah. And Liz. Uh, can I get you to your coffee? A uh, cup of tea would be great, thanks. Cool. I'm Ted. Ted is the caretaker here, and he also looks after one of your aunt's businesses. I'm sorry about the little mix-up earlier, but what with the age of your aunt, we're expecting someone a little older. Oh, no problem. Uh, I'm just sad that I never got to meet my great-aunt. Great? Aunt? Well, how old are you, honey? Twenty-two. Oh, why, well, you're still just a baby. Old enough to be a jackaroo. Oh, jackaroo, forget it. I tried that for a week and it gave me such a sore bum. I've never been really good with horses. You, you put me in front of a computer and that's where I'm the happiest. I bet you're an Aries. Listen to her partner, she's very psychic. Well, actually, I'm a Virgo, but my mum was an Aries. Oh, well, I knew there was a connection there somewhere. Uh, pardon me, your mother was an Aries? Uh, mum and Dad died in a car accident about six years ago. I'm sorry, mate. Um, so you run the station all by yourself? No, the foreman does most of that. Well, come on over here and sit down, honey. You must be so tired after that long journey. So, how do you like your new home? Well, it's bigger than the sheriff's quarters. Uh, what happened to the ceiling? Oh, uh, do you know very much about your great aunt? Particularly the circumstances about her death. I didn't even know I had a great aunt until I got the solicitor's letter. Oh. She was a wonderful lady. And a very astute businesswoman. She and Elsie. Elsie. Elsie was your great aunt Gladys's best friend. They were bosom buddies. They were very, very close. Very, very, very close. They lived here together and died together well elsie and gladys had business interests all over town and some of them weren't exactly profitable legal oh dear in fact most of them weren't well it's been three months since your aunt and elsie died and we're still getting people coming to the house claiming to be their business partners well we knew nothing about it well what we could figure out was what they would do was buy an unsuccessful business in a promising area burn it down, and then use the insurance money to refurbish it. They'd put someone in there, build it up to a successful business, then sell it a huge profit. And their scheme never dawned on anyone. <laughs> the only businesses we know are legal, are the slimy codpiece, the nightclub that Aparna runs, and Buck's Bargains, which Liz and I look after. Tease up. What did you mean about the circumstances surrounding Artie's death and what happened to the ceiling? Doesn't he know yet? No. Oh, uh, hell, I think it's time for my steroid sandwich. No, it's not. You stay right here. Well, how can I explain this? Well, like so many other older people, your great aunt Gladys and Auntie Elsie suffered from arthritis. They weren't satisfied with traditional medicine, so they decided to try natural folk remedies. Some of those therapies actually work. Well, someone must have told them that bananas were good for relieving arthritis, and that's what they were doing when they passed away. What? Eating bananas? Sort of. It was a very hot day, and, and, and they, were, they were up in your great aunt's bedroom with the bananas. And they were giving each other banana rubdowns. <laughs> banana rubdowns. I'm told you can do the same thing with cucumbers. <laughs> or marrows in your case. But that still doesn't explain how they died or what happened to the ceiling. It was a freak accident. The floor just gave away. Termites. They landed right there. They both had a stroke. After a fall like that? Oh, I would have thought that was the last thing on their mind. Well, I think it was so romantic. They died together in a lover's embrace. <laughs> a, a lover's embrace? With the bananas. Well, Harry, I think we've beat around the bush long enough. The truth is that your great Aunt Gladys and Elsie had been lovers for 57 years. But they were old ladies. Yeah, isn't that beautiful?
Well, here I am, my first day in Sydney, in the big smoke at Arnie Gladys's. The people here are very nice, even though a couple of them seem a bit queer, especially <laughs> Ted. He says some really weird things sometimes. <laughs> I like a partner. In some ways, she reminds me of you, Mum. And Dog, he's very nice. He'll be like the big brother I never had. And then there's Liz. She'll be like a tomboy sister. <laughs> no. Now maybe she'll be like a, another brother. <laughs> anyway, I'll fit in okay. I won't be able to write much for a while because I've got all my stuff arriving tomorrow and I have to find a job. I've decided to go for something in computers. Well, seeing that's what I know best. I'd better go now. I've asked Bert the foreman to bring you some fresh flowers on Sundays and to make sure your graves are kept weeded. Bye for now. Love, Harry. P.S. I miss you. Well, Glad, what do you think? Well, else we didn't have much of a choice. After all, he was the only relation we had between the two of us. Well, he's not too bad, even though he is a heterosexual. Ooh, <laughs> what about the business? Oh, I don't know about that. But at least he's a buck, so he's got a head start. Time will tell. Will we let him know about the money? Money? <laughs> Whatever do you mean? Gladys Buck, you know exactly what I mean. You could never keep a secret from me. <laughs> Don't be so sure about that, Elsie. Don't bet on it. Yeah.